I'm Mike McCurdy. ABC TV is reviving a sitcom formula not seen in the United States for about 20 years, one involving Asian Americans. WGLT's Willis Kern has more on the new series airing tonight and each Tuesday evening called Fresh Off the Boat. Here's a scene from the show. Four ninety nine. I'll give you two. The popsicles are a set price. They're not negotiable. You're good. Two fifty. Ma'am, if you want to beat the heat, they sell air conditioners at Sears. Oh, we have an air conditioner. Mom's just won't let us turn it on. Air conditioning is expensive. Who do you think we are, the Changs? Very prominent family in D.C. They're sort of the Liaos of the upholstery world. Very prominent family in Taiwan. They made their fortune in textiles. Ma'am. Not today. There's a dog loose in the produce section. A dog? I'll give you a dollar for all of this. That's the opening scene from a recent episode of Fresh Off the Boat, ABC's new series revolving around an Asian-American family. Given its cultural setting, the series is being closely watched by critics and those who care about how minority groups are portrayed in pop culture. One of those is Illinois State University Assistant Professor Nicholas Hartlip, who joins us occasionally to talk about minority roles. He's the author of The Modern Societal Impacts of the Model Minority Stereotype. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for having me. Fresh Off the Boat is told in narrated style by Eddie Huang, who takes viewers back into the 90s when his family relocated from Washington, D.C. to Orlando, Florida, where his father had landed a job at a restaurant. The family is Taiwanese, as is most of the cast. For those who haven't seen it, to me, it's kind of like an Asian-American version of modern family. Would you agree with that? Yeah, I could see that parallel. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Well, I I certainly would say it's good in the sense that... um, you know, now Asian Americans have a a show that they can see themselves in that reflects them. But I guess at times it can be bad in the sense the st- uh, stereotypes that the show tends to reinforce. Um, but nonetheless, the fact that we're having this discussion today, I think, is a good thing. The last U.S.-based sitcom involving Asian Americans was Margaret Cho's All-American Girl. Prior to that, there were shows like Kung Fu in the 70s and Gung Ho and O'Hara in the 80s that saw some degree of success. How is this show different from those? I think we've moved f- you know, far from Michael Keaton and, and Gung Ho, but... I think of the the show. Uh, it's it's well. First off, there's a lot of stereotypes. They're not just stereotypes of Asians. They're stereotypes of of white people. We need to move past stereotypes in general. But from the shows, from an Asian American standpoint, um, it's really fascinating, right? Because here you have a Korean, an Asian American, a Korean American, Randall Park playing the protagonist of a Taiwanese immigrant, right? And so it's kind of like this bleeding in, who is Asian, who is not. Um, but, but what you do see is, right, East Asians in, in the shows. You, it's not Indians and or um, other subgroups of Asian American population. So I think that should be considered, the, the actors, Constance Wu and um, Randall Park. Is it possible to have really a sitcom on television that doesn't play on some type of stereotype? I mean, you look at every one, and it doesn't have to be minority-based or cultural-based. I mean, look at Two Broke Girls, the dumb blonde stereotype. So you can go on and on with that sort of thing. Uh, Aren't Asian Americans just out there really uh, amongst a level playing field of stereotype victims? Yeah, I I think you're right, that observation. I guess one example would be, I don't think there is a a level playing field if it if there want if if you know supposedly one existed in the sense of I, I thought of the episode where um, Eddie is called the chink uh, that term chink and gook those terms those are equally as bad as the n-word for black people and so the fact that you know ABC can can use that language and not have to bleep it out or censor it um, I think that shows kind of this double standard of racial epithets that are that are okay to use so even among racial epithets in pop culture you're looking at a tiered system here because you really uh, really can't say the n-word in a, in a setting like that but the words you just used are fair game yeah yeah I think of um, there's something going there's at least on my Facebook page or something that was um, going back and forth. It was a story in 2009 of a, a Texas um, 
Congress a woman who basically said that Asian people should have easier sounding last names. They should shorten it. And you know, I, and I think of the story. There's a story that um, I've read to my children: Tiki Tiki Tembo, No Sirembo, Chari Bari Bucci, Pick Perry Pembo. And that story, right? If you go to Wikipedia, you can read about that story. Is this idea that Asian last names, um, the the longer the name, the more honor. And so the story, right? And so there's a history, I mean, of of picking on Asian Americans. It it just seems that uh, in terms of comedic relief, um, there Asians are always a punching bag, and the stereotypes are never ending. But from what I've seen of the show, it plays off some of these stereotypes, but generally portrays the cast as regular people. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, the you know the last episode I watched, I I, I did enjoy it when they kind of. The sisters are kind of trying to one up each other, and at the end, right, they come to the conclusion like they both are, they're both failing, right, in this American dream. Cattleman's Ranch is doing horribly, and and the the brother that's the, that, that's the restaurant. <laughs> yeah, thing. that's the restaurant. Yeah, and uh, and um, the the other the other family members' um, furniture business is not going so well. So I do think that um, the producers are tapping into the the feelings of of the viewers and things that viewers can relate to. So I, I do give credit to that. There is um, that element that I'm sure Fresh Out of the Boat is is being pretty popular right now. One critic in Asian American writing for the Huffington Post said about Fresh Off the Boat, many of my peers take problems with various aspects of the show, whether it's be the parents' accents or how certain themes feel forced. For example, Asian families not saying I love you to each other, being competitive with in-laws, smelly Asian food, things like that. But she says there seems to be a general dissatisfaction rooted in misrepresentation. Do you see it that way? Yeah, I would say misrepresentation it could be a, a synonym for essentializing. So I see a lot of essentialism, right? The easy go-to things like the stinky tofu, the Lunchables, like you said, the fighting in-laws. The model minority stereotype is present all the time. I mean, I see that in the grades, the second episode, Eddie gets his grades, all A's, and then mom gets upset. Hey, you're going to basically Saturday school. We're going to... We're gonna, um, drill and kill you more. So I, I do see a lot of essentializing. One thing that I, I need to make a point of, Asian Americans, right, are entitled to receive the show how they how they receive it. There's no there's no single one voice saying, oh, this is a good show, this is a bad show. And nor should there. Here's another scene from a previous episode called Fajita Man. This is where Louis Wong, the father, has an idea for a new type of restaurant while Eddie, his son, is trying to finagle some cash out of his family members to buy a brand new video game. Luckily, my dad was about to stumble into the biggest restaurant craze of the mid-90s. Fajitas! <laughs> Orlando can't get enough utility-grade skirt steak delivered in a sizzling skillet. No way. No way white people will eat meat out of a pan. Yes way. Yes way all day. You bring them tortillas, veggies, and steak, and they assemble it themselves. It's like an edible Ikea chair. Or Legos you can eat. Oh, he improved on it. He just made it better. So we're about to come with some money, huh? Hey, Papa. You been working out? Because you're looking swole. What? Since things are looking so good at the restaurant, maybe you can spot me some bread for a video game, 50 small? I knew this would happen. <laughs> the downside of the greatest country in the world. Entitled children feeling like they don't have to work to get what they want. Now that last line there, entitled children feeling like they don't have to work to get what they want. Does that play off the stereotype of Asians being taskmasters? I see a, a lot of the elements about the Asians, uh, Asian Americans being portrayed in the show as very frugal, um, kind of like Jewish people were. So again, the model minority construction of we're going to force a lot of education on you. Um, there's there's a scene when um, Randall Park says, you know, my wife is unhappy. Our son, our, our life's falling apart. Our son got straight A's and et cetera, et cetera, right? And we would scoff at that. We would be, you know, most people would be happy their kids get straight A's. So I think of that being being the common unifying stereotype is, is a model minority constructions of the family. Most of the other uh, Asian American uh, stereotypes from years ago, pretty much perished after one season or so. Do you expect Fresh Off the Boat to last past this one first season? Yeah, I, I think it'll. I think it'll be around for a, for a second season for sure.
and you're going to enjoy watching it. Yeah, yeah, I'm a, I'm a regular viewer. Nicholas Hartlip is assistant professor at Illinois State University and the author of The Modern Societal Impacts of the Model Minority Stereotype. Thanks for joining us today. Thanks. I'm Willis Kern. Fresh Off the Boat premiered early last month with a double episode following Modern Family. The first of those two episodes garnered nearly 8 million viewers, making it the second highest rated comedy premiere this season. It airs tonight at 7 on ABC TV. Fresh Off the Boat, I'm getting mine everywhere I go. If you don't know, help me not get not. Fresh Off the Boat, help me down know where I come from. But I know where I go, I'm fresh off the boat.